Let's talk about this show. <sighs> oh my god. All right. This is uh oh, this is live a- from the Red Cross. No, I'm just kidding. Okay, seriously. <laughs> this is a shitty happy hour, you guys, because I just found out that I am probably not going to Iceland, which mm. I was supposed to do. I was supposed to be leaving in Two days? Two days. Two days. And uh, looks like I'm probably not going in two freaking days. And guess why she's not going. Guess why I'm not going. Fucking coronavirus. Coronavirus. Fucking coronavirus. And we're not drinking Coronas today. No, we're, we're drinking freaking champagne. We're celebrating, we're celebrating the fact <laughs> that we're alive. That, and that we are... This is bullshit. Living in a time where <laughs> cro- coronavirus is... Living in the time of corona. <laughs> Yeah, it's so bad. So we are going to say welcome to Creative Happy Hour, where we get drunk (laughs) on the creative possibilities and tears. And and there's a lot of possibilities. There's a lot of possibilities. We're going to talk about plagues and diseases and pandemics and how they affect our fucking happiness, our life, our way of life and our creativity. So wait, hey, girl, cheers to you. She's drinking already. I don't blame her. Because, I was like, frankly, wait, I mean, cheers to you. Let's have our champagne and let's see if this bubbly makes us feel, well, I, you know, a little happier. I've shown up at some happy hours, <laughs> a little downtrodden, you know, it, many, 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 t- many times. Right, right. Is the, the, the crying happy hour. The happy I'll hour. my nose because we both have coronavirus. Yeah, That's the whole, whole was- point of happy hour is... <laughs> To download what's going on Fucking and hell. create some kind of happy some solution. Happy solution. I worked my ass off to pay for these non-refundable plane tickets, and I cannot guarantee that I'm going to be able to get all of my money back. I just literally booked, like, Blue Lagoon. I booked all oh, these hotels. I love the Blue Lagoon. Well, place is so guess, I guess I would have loved it, but now I won't know. Maybe yeah, your are. bathroom is not the blue lagoon. I'm so There's a lot of blue in there, but it's definitely oh my God. not the blue lagoon. I'm telling you. So anyway, I mean, other than coronavirus ruining my fucking time, Ugh. do we already see kind of the effects on what it's doing to creativity, to, you know, basically like the well, status quo in this country? I mean, and I've said this before, creativity thrives in you know, harsh environments. <laughs> Great. It does. I See, mean, but my creativity would, would have thrived in Iceland. She's I'm probably thinking. gonna write a book this weekend. <laughs> I already fin- I finished editing my fucking book today because I was like rushing to get it done. And then yeah. come to find out that I could have been super slow and lame about it and not finished it. <laughs> and now Micah has to read my freaking book. I have to read it. And now she has well, to read it. Like, <laughs> probably going to be in lockdown pretty soon the way this coronavirus thing is playing out. You guys will all want to read my book because you're going to be so bored in your yeah. quarantines. It's going to be great. It's all about writer's block and how to solve the mindset. So you're going to be so happy. So, yeah, I've noticed with Corona, I've noticed a lot of, like, the comics kind of making jokes about it. I feel like it's become very, very political, and I think that that's the sort of thing that's going to give rise to some reaction when it comes to, you know, creatives. Well, I think news industries Mm -hmm. figured this out a long time ago, that Mm -hmm. the more, you know, dramatic and sensational you make something... The more money you make. Yeah. And so to me, the more drama it creates and it pisses me off. But right. that's absolutely right. I agree with you. I think that that's typical. And it's gotten more of that case now. I mean, I think it used to be that art would kind of call more attention to, you know, some kind of a, you know, pandemic or some kind of thing. And now it's like we have so much attention on everything that we need the creativity to kind of distract ourselves mm. Or to kind of calm down the psychosis. Like, I mean, you you were telling me a supermarket, like, everything's Oh, yeah. So I went to the supermarket yeah. on, well, I hung out with some friends over the weekend. And they, you know, they've got their whole, like, zombie apocalypse. Oh, that's right. <laughs> you know, if, if the zombie apocalypse comes, mm-hmm. you know, they have, like, radios and inverter chargers. Oh and, God. I mean, they could keep the whole village going with the <laughs> shit they have. And, um and you know, I have to say, I was kind of jealous. And <laughs> you're like, I want an invite. And, and I did, I did get an invite in case you know the shit hits the fan. I'm oh my invited. god! Oh, that's good. That's I'm good. Invited. I might crash because I have nowhere to go now that I'm not in Iceland. Yeah, um, yeah. <laughs> there's a zombie apocalypse. Well, I mean, I heard there, there's a coronavirus uh, contender 
oh contestant oh in, or in general down See? the street from Perfect. our house. We're, we can go visit. I, I mean, mean, we're in the epicenter. We're in the, but they we're flew in the, them all into like Travis <laughs> Air Force Base. So let's take them out of California. And gee, I wonder who routed that plane. Right? Could Donald it be Trump? Donald Trump? Could it be Donald he was like, Trump? No, 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 don't bring them there. <laughs> no, take them to California. California. I hate California. Let's yeah. bring them there. Speaking of Donald Trump, he's like, I'm not going to get any votes from them anyway. Exactly. Like, I feel that these things become so political now. Mm, I mean, mm -hmm. let's look at coronavirus and be really, and this has nothing to do with creativity, but I'm doing some creative. You're not drinking enough. I'm doing some creative theory. More than I do. I fucking do, man. Um, you had a shitty day, but I had a shitty, shitty day. So I had oh, shitty, you're my day was shitty, shitty, bang, bang. Shitty, and it was, shitty, bang, bang. It was totally. Awesome. So, yeah, I think that the fact that coronavirus was like epicenters in, you know, China and Iran. I was like, oh, really? A little much, you think? And then this yeah. Italy thing. I mean, and then so like creatively. So Italy, it shut down Fashion Week, <laughs> which fucking sucks like i know you're gonna think that doesn't matter but fashion week fashion sorry, week matters that is to whole, Canada. it matters to me but it matters to the whole freaking economy yeah they shut down the goddamn louvre uh, today or yesterday they shut down like you can't see the goddamn mona lisa because of coronavirus so i think that's a little bullshitty like a lot of these countries their economy 100 percent well not 100 percent, but a big percentage yeah that matters. depends on tourism depends on tourism well and they said Iceland's economy they actually, depends on me going <laughs> and spending money there and hell no, anyone from Reykjavik, can you please send a private plane send me a private jet. that'd be amazing yeah send me a private jet fucker yeah. like that way i don't have to be quarantined With, like clean air jet clean air jet i like yeah it. so mm -hmm. i mean that's what they said in china one of the reasons why they didn't really talk about it sooner mm -hmm. in some of these places is because they depend on the tourism oh shit they depend on tourism and they depend on people you know goods coming and going yeah and you know that's for me what creativity is a lot of you know exchange exchange of ideas exchange of products exchange, exchange of, of viruses exchange of viruses i mean there is that idea of a, an idea going viral or of the contagion of an idea and we have that episode yeah about how to go viral and we talked about some of this stuff but when we were researching this episode which you know we do our research a little bit sometimes yeah um we were looking at all these different diseases and how they impacted creativity and, you know, creative expression and how the interplay between the pandemic or the epidemic and the arts and culture kind of went. Right. So should we kind of do a rundown of a few of those? Well, yeah. I mean, what we were kind of talking about was that historically something like coronavirus is not obviously a new thing. No. And what happens when you have a pandemic or an epidemic or some kind of demic, demic <laughs> bullshit sickness that you know, spreads mm -hmm. among people. Yeah. And, uh, and, news, and, and news outlets. Rapidly. Yeah. Then, you know, you, you create a lot of drama and chaos a and lot of fear it. Mm -hmm. and emotion is high. Yes. And what is, what happens when emotions are high? People start expressing themselves mm -hmm. emotionally. Mm -hmm. And one of the ways that they do that is through art. Yeah. And, absolutely and absolutely. the other thing they're trying to make sense of it like i'm trying to make sense art, of it i mean well the art has different reasons for being one of the reasons is trying to make sense of something sure trying to give meaning to something that seems to have no meaning because it's so destructive uh, you know yeah. or also we were talking about raising consciousness about something yeah creating a community around yeah. an issue i mean mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in the you know 80s and 90s yeah when the aids epidemic was mm -hmm. I mean, it was very predominant in the United States and around the world. And in an artistic community. And you in an artistic I mean? community. Yeah. You know, it, it was the artists and musicians that yeah. really were dealing with the problem on the they street. They were hit hardest. Yeah, absolutely. They were hit hardest mm -hmm. and they were rallying around it. You know, yes, figuring out so. ways to you know, reduce the the transmission, mm -hmm. to educate. They were using Education, art to educate. Yeah, but also to try to express themselves because I feel like so many times with these diseases, there's a blame that's put on a certain group. Right. They, so with AIDS, there somebody was... Somebody have to point your finger at somebody. Totally. And with AIDS, they pointed the finger at the gay population. The gay population. So there, was, there had to be this expression of saying, this is not our fault. This is something that we are dealing yeah. with. And there are issues like that with, like, for example, leprosy, where, mm -hmm. you know, leprosy was was blamed on certain groups that were considered to be filthy, 
right. whether it was morally filthy or physically filthy. So even as early as the Bible, play, uh, leprosy was considered to be something that was, you know, kind of this morally Extreme, corrupt, morally in corrupt. Some, yes. in some way, and sinners got leprosy. Sinners got leprosy. And, you know, if you were a leper, it was a reason for you to be ostracized from society, to be separated out. And that's really interesting. So it creates too. the, 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 the other. division. It, it creates, creates the, the other. other. Yeah. Yeah. And and same with coronavirus. I mean, people yes. have already started xenophobia be, against Chinese yeah. or against you know yeah, Iran they are or not whatever. they're not going to Chinese venues and they're not drinking Corona beer. They're not drinking Corona beer, which I don't blame them for that. <laughs> no. We're not going to get sponsored by them no. ever. In the future. <laughs> but you know, they, one of the um, I was listening to um, a podcast and they just have their first episode. It's the podcast is Epidemic. Ooh. And it is... People love sickness podcasts. There's, well, there's a podcast I can tell called... You, um, I want to do a shout out to a podcast that um, we have our eye on a lot called This Podcast Will Kill You. Yeah, I haven't listened it's, to that it's, one. Yeah, it's pretty I'm listening cool. to Sick right now, Ooh, which is really... See, all illness sick. all the time. That's what we do. I know. Uh-huh. Um, so if I go to my library, Epidemic, it's um, Dr. Celine Gounder and Ronald Klein. And Ronald Klein worked... On, I, I think, all the way back, I mean, he worked with the Reagan administration, with the Bush administration, See, we're talking administrations Obama again. Administration. All the politics of epidemics. But he was the guy that kind of organizes, he he makes all the big decisions happen right. in government. Like, we need to do this, and we need to do that, and we need to do it fast, and we need to cut through these legislation yes. so that yes. we can make it happen so because, we can react so we can be reactive and i think right. that's kind of the creative part of all these epidemics is the reacting to things and kind right. of reacting and acting and in this freaking coronavirus situation i feel like we are not having the normal um way things go because like look pence has been named you know the corona czar and you know he's basically trying to pray it away and well, yeah I mean, you know he, so there's a lot of misinformation as well yeah, I mean he he's not the right guy no, for the he's job not, by he's any not. means. No, no, but, not at all. But this guy, you know, what did I say his name was? Klein, 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 Klein. or whatever. Mm-hmm. He basically said that you know at the end of the you know they talk about all these things about the um, the coronavirus, and he's mm-hmm. like, yeah, and tonight go have dinner at your Chinese restaurant or go to your local Chinese community and yeah. and hang out. And he was like. Do not allow mm-hmm. the divisiveness of this I like to, that. you know, it's like there's the fear of the actual virus itself. Yes. But then there's the fear associated, you know, it's like all of the social fear. Oh, it's great. Well, I mean, I remember when the AIDS epidemic was just really hitting and you had some sectors of the society, like especially very conservative people who were like, oh, my God, I don't want to invite a gay person to yeah. dinner because I'm going to catch AIDS. And it was outrageous. It just got to the point where it was so crazy. And I'm not going to name names, but I know people close to me who were like, no, your gay friends can't come to the house. Or if if we, you know, have gay people come to our house, we're going to have to like wash the glasses in a separate machine and all that. It was insane. And that's really the opposite of the inclusiveness. But I mean, I'm not saying, oh, let's go crazy and go make out with a bunch of people who have coronavirus. Yeah. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm saying, you know, let's educate ourselves. And that's, that's what, not what artists, you said earlier. Right. Off camera. I know. Off camera, I was like, I'm going to go. She feed told my her husband, husband that she's going to go make out with that <laughs> sick corona guy down the street. The corona guy. I think I said I was going to go to the Silver Pace. I'm going to get a six pack of coronas and I'm going to go down to the local hospital and I'm just going to lick the doorknobs. Exactly. I was so like, tempted. damn, dude. You're like, damn. She, yeah, you, she's like, we can reschedule the trip Karen oh you don't God. need to get crazy she saw a big fight you saw a big explosion oh, that's and pretty that's awesome right? I thought the fights with my daughter were bad and I'm like I was like all right you're like wow she actually does yell really, I was like that really loud it's amazing it was awesome um so let's speaking of my husband let's talk about the plague for example <laughs> Nice segue. Right? Wasn't that nice? I liked the segue. Yeah, so the plague. Stick by it. So the plague was a really interesting epidemic. Yeah. Just because this was in Europe right before the Renaissance hit. And so many people said that the plague, by decimating all these people, kind of freed up resources for other 
people to and kind of gave rise to all of this. So they know, took creativity. joy in a sudden they disappointment. Took, they, they really did. They re Isn't that crazy? They really did. But wow. look at the plague with the representations of plague. You had this dance of death stuff. Trying to, yeah, trying or to. Or a ring around the rose. Yes, all that really full yeah. pose. Yeah. Ashes, 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 we, we all fall, fall down. down. <laughs> yeah, I mean. It's creepy look, as It's creepy as fuck. fuck. It is creepy as fuck, but that's what art started doing. You had the death masks, and you had the ring around the rosy, and you had just, you know, this dance and bless of death, you. and you had, and bless you, and you had bring out your dead, you know, that sort of thing. But the plague really did give rise to the stuff. And then you had Boccaccio, who did the Decameron, about people who were running to the countryside away from the city center yeah. where the plague was. And that's interesting, too, is that usually the cultural centers are the city centers. They're usually the you know, the, the very concentrated civilization. Yeah. And that's where art happens a lot. And all of a sudden you've got more art and culture happening away in the from, village. Yeah. Away from possible contagion. So I'm wondering. Well, because they were be... actually alive to do the art because they're alive to do the art. And also they're escaping. Though it's like this escape art. Yeah. Escape and artists. It's escapism. Ooh. Yeah. Escape artists. Ooh, that's interesting. But it's like a, a form of escapism where it's like, I'm going to be far away. Therefore, I'm not going to get this. I'm going to Well, I'm going to abstract mm -hmm. this situation More bubbly for that's us. happening to everything. other people. Yeah. I'm going to It's take, happening to others. That's this what I'm is a reality other, for others, others. And I'm going to do mm -hmm. an abstract. Yes. I'm going to abstract it. Yeah. I think that that's absolutely true. And then you you compare that to when you had the um, consumption, you know, or the, uh, what was it? It was consumption. Well, I mean, let's talk about before we move on to consumption. I mean, we had lots of well, works of we art. We have a lot of, we have a with lot the play. of works of art. Of course we did. Yeah. Well, you know, yeah, we had all of the, well, we, you had the, what, the Bruegel? The, the, the Bruegel, Bruegel yeah. the, mm -hmm. the Triumph of Death. Triumph. I mean, look up that painting. People. Yeah, it's creepy as fuck. That painting mm -hmm. is so scary. And, you know, I actually saw those paintings in Austria. Oh, and, yeah. Um, they still have a lot of and power they're today. they're enormous. Yes. They're enormous yes. paintings. Like, I remember yeah. seeing them in a book, and they were, mm -hmm. like, super detailed. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I, well, I specifically went to Austria because I wanted to see these. I see them. Mm -hmm. paint or, no, Vienna. I went to Vienna. Well, Austria. Austria. Yeah, I went good. to Vienna. You're still good. You're still I'm good. Still you're still in the same right. country. <laughs> you're still fine. <laughs> um, I love how our camera is kind of tilting. It's like we're like sliding towards death. Yeah. It's fine. We're yeah, just going to keep the, it that it's way. It's the like... Tower of Babel <laughs> slide. slide. <laughs> oh no, but he. I saw the Tower of Babel, the Triumph of Death. I, I saw some other ones, too. It is all that stuff about the chaos and about which force is going to end up winning. And this real fear of like, oh, my God, is chaos, evil, death going to win? Right. You know, and I think you're in the not, darkness and the light. Yeah, and the, exactly. Like that's, I think the contrasts get super exaggerated and, you know, impacted. And I think that there's a whole thing of people wanting to make it even worse. Like the triumph right. of death is, and the dance of death is that thing of, oh my God, the disease is going to win. Well, and you know? celebrating it mm -hmm. also is a way to feel more alive. Yeah. So, oh, totally. so when yeah. you're able to be reflective mm -hmm. about mm -hmm. a disease mm -hmm. that's killing other people, <laughs> as long as as long as it's other, other was the key word other. in this other. No, it it allows you to feel like you like he calls it the triumph of death. Yeah. Yeah. So it's the it's triumph of win. death winning. It, it's the triumph of he. You know, he triumphed over death. He's like, still here, fucker. Still here. I painted this fucking scary totally. ass picture. Right. Right. Of all well, my brothers and sisters keeling over. And well, I mean, I find that interesting because when you look at some, like, I feel like each plague has its own art form. But it also has its own other. So, and it has its own other. So Absolutely. I yeah. believe the plague was somehow, I mean, I know from some of my historical fiction that I've read with Geraldine Brooks. Mm hmm they thought that God was punishing them. They had yeah. done something against God. They did. They had no idea that it had anything to do with rats and hygiene. Yeah, but then then there was the blame. Like, then, you know, there was some yeah. blame on, like, you know, like, kind of that constant thing, like, Jews are poisoning the wells, for right. example. That sort of thing. And I think the plague had some of the same type of blame mm -hmm. happening. And it was just all about, and again, it's about morality. Ungodly, ungodliness. It's all about morality yeah. once again. But then you get to a disease that's kind of what I had just brought up, you know, the consumption, consumption and, you know, the tuberculosis. 
And that is a completely different thing. It was just as destructive. I mean, yeah. and oh, I have a story actually. Ooh, yay. My my grandmother's grandfather, so what is mm-hmm. that? My great 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 grandfather? I just suck at math, but whatever. Some ancestor of yours, yeah. Grandfather. Yeah, so it would be my great great great. Mm-hmm. He had five wives. That's Not because he was a player. That's a lot of okay. wives. Because they all killed over. Because they all died with tuberculosis. Yeah. He had, I think, seven Ooh. children. Ooh. All but one died. Oh, and, God. and henceforth is me. Mm-hmm. Because that child was Your able tough stock. Tough stock. to um, tuberculosis have right. the parent of my grandmother. Right. Whereas right. Then my grandmother came into the picture, and then uh-huh. my dad came into the picture, and then I came into the picture. So... Genetic I mean, this work. one, so I, I probably have some kind of immunity. You probably do. Yeah. Yeah. But all five, all of his children died. Oof. And so I That's actually so think, and I didn't know that until my Ooh. grandmother, someone interviewed Ooh. my grandma. One of my cousins did an interview mm-hmm. on CD with my grandmother. She was 94 and she told the story about oh, all his wives that wow. kept dying. I think four of them died with tuberculosis. One of them died with something else. That's a lot of dying. And he was probably a carrier. Oh, yeah. He was he like was, typhoid Harry. Yeah. I mean, he was a dirty <laughs> little pig. Yes. He was a dirty little pig. Killing his wife. I'm sure he and was a carrier. Sure. There's no way that How did he got... not get it? Yeah. Seriously. He had it. It was him. He was typhoid Harry. Like, we just found typhoid Harry as opposed to typhoid Mary. I'm excited about this. It's amazing. Can you believe but, that shit? Right. So anyway, consumption. That's, that's amazing. But consumption. I'm a child of it. Yeah. You are. But but consumption I'm a triumph had, of death. But you are. But I think that it had a romantic side to it. I think mm-hmm. the physical symptoms of creating that pallor and the pink cheeks and the way they died, very becoming weak and quiet. It was very romantic. And so you look yeah. at the number of artists who actually portrayed, like who painted their wives dying yeah. of consumption, you know, and I mean, just major like um, Monet, Rembrandt, painting yeah. their spouses dying of consumption. Mm-hmm. Who the fuck does that? You fucked up little pigs. But they did. Like, it, that was a thing. And then, like, Dostoevsky, who was writing a lot about it. Like, people were kind of obsessed. And that fed that whole Russian nihilism mm. was the consumption because it was. It seemed like it was so impossible to do anything about it. And then, of course, we have the work that we talk about all the time, which is La Bohème. Right. You know, and that is super romantic. Again, it's like yeah. all these artists dying in the, their garrets. And it's all, you know, what can we do about it? Nothing. Coughing up blood. Coughing up blood. But it was a very artistic plague. I mean, even even the, um, was it her mother in Cinderella dies with tuberculosis? Because oh. in the beginning of Cinderella, when I, even when yeah. I saw the ballet, she coughs up the blood right. on the there handkerchief. Go. There you go. It's it, romantic. It, it's it a romantic thing. It infiltrated so yeah. many of our fairy tales right? and our stories. It did. I'm surprised Bambi's mom didn't die of consumption. I mean, you know, what the fuck? Probably uh, came from dirty <laughs> ass deer. <laughs> dirty probably ass jumped deer. from deer to humans. Right? Oh my God. So disgusting. But then you have things like syphilis. And the funny thing with syphilis was that people, since syphilis came from that is not a romantic sickness at all. Well, no. When your nose sex. falls off. Yeah, when your nose falls off, but you know that it's because you've been stooping like crazy. Oh. It's disgusting. What it makes me want to take antibiotics right now. I know. It's like, where has that nose been? Um, no, but that's the third stage. Isn't that disgusting? It's like when you're really syphilitic, then your nose starts to go. It's horrible. <laughs> oh, my God. Fuck. I mean, but, <laughs> that is not civilized. No, it's civilized. I feel like I have it. I know. Now I'm like, oh my god, I'm so my blessed. nose is so screwed up from oh. all my allergies. Do you think that I have? Syphilis? Isn't it crazy? But syphilis, since it came from the sex thing, it was like the art is not the pretty art that you get with consumption. Right. It's more like educational shit of like, hey, if you stick that in there, you're gonna get this, and you need to in stop there. syphilis in there. So it's like much more. And on there. And there. It's going to be really shitty. It's going to be like... (laughs) But yeah, but I think that it became much more educational. You know? I don't think there was any one group that was spreading syphilis. Just hoas. Just hoas. Every group. Filthy hoas. Well, yeah. And like men were bringing it home to their wives. Exactly. It's like press the gift that keeps on giving. You know? It's it's nasty. But but it's an interesting um, thing. And the same... Like with cholera, for example, you had also kind of a different kind of art where because cholera was one of those first plagues where much like 
fucking coronavirus. <laughs> my fave. Where, seriously, my fave. Right now, my current fave, <laughs> current fave plague, coronavirus. It's high on, on the right. list. Well, cholera was the first time that the public actually was super mistrustful of how mm. it was handled by the press, by the government. People were thinking that people were manipulating cholera, especially doctors, Jewish mm. doctors, to make money. Mm. And so cholera had a lot of, you know, you have a bunch of books, you know, love in the time of cholera, all mm. the stuff. I read that book. The, the cholera becomes kind of linked to political, you know, dishonesty a little bit. And so mm. there were a lot of satirical cartoons about it. There were more than the beautiful romantic artworks, more than the activism was kind of this like, hey, people, wake up. People I are agree with you. I mean, I think cholera. Yeah. Well, I think right now, I mean, I think you're exactly right. I think mm -hmm. that's going to play out because we're getting ready. It's an election year. We're in an election year. We've got a president that, a is, as of asshole. June of last year, mm -hmm. completely threw in the garbage Obama's yeah. pandemic pl pandemic plan. Yeah, to exactly. Protect and the I'm American not touching people. my nose because of syphilis. I'm just saying she's got it right. On no, I mean it, it's <laughs> it's a little bit uncanny. It's a little uncanny. Yeah. That Mm -hmm. I think, and I'm like, why aren't the Democrats, why aren't they like, you, like, I mean, why aren't they using this right now? Why aren't they saying like, well, when I get into office, no, I'm gonna... I was on the phone with my mom today and my mom goes, I think the Democrats are blowing everything out of proportion. I was like, the Democrats, are they now? Really? So she thought oh, she that this whole thing, thing I know, she thought this whole thing is something to get her little darling baby boy Trump, you know, in trouble. I'm like, no, he's trying. I mean, God knows what's happening. It's incredibly frustrating. And I think that as things go along, we actually look for pandemics that are more and more kind of obscure, obscure and exciting. Like, I mean, just look at SARS and Zika and all this crazy stuff right. where it's like, how can we create something where we have little, you know, control over how it's transmitted? You know, we always now with creativity and travel, and sharing, and exchange, and, you know, import, export, all this stuff, like, how do you stop things at a border? You can't. You People, can't. You can't. There's so many things. I mean, the irony is, is that we we can't even order more masks than no. they allow us, because they all come from fucking come, China. Exactly. So we were, like, on a back order for masks. I, I have I was like, I'm I a have mask, but I'm not going to use. I'm a I'm going fucking nowhere. healthcare yeah. provider, right. and there's a back order on right. masks? I can give and you. And you mine. want me to come to work? Like, no. Right? No. But I can give you mine now that I'm not going to fucking Iceland, where it's too cold for the virus anyway. I mean, what a motherfucking fucking fuck. I'm so furious. But but that's the thing is that there's always somebody to blame when it comes to these things. And how yeah. as a creative, how do we stop from having this like fuck up our whole plan, our whole life? How do we keep this? Because I think that like these pandemics kind of freeze everything. They freeze the productivity. They freeze the trade. They freeze, you know, the economy. How well, do we keep it from affecting us so negatively? They, I think that they heighten and extremize certain aspects of and society. And then they crush other aspects. Yeah, and they crush other aspects. Like my travel. Yeah. Yeah, like your travel plans. <laughs> but, I mean, I think historically, you know, what we were talking about earlier is mm -hmm. that creatives are the – you know, they really are kind of the cultural compass or the moral compass. We of, are. We are. Of yes. the culture. Yes. And, and kind of the conduit, like the message kind the of comes ones, through. It gets yeah. disseminated through that creativity, the creative production. Yeah. Because you know, you're yeah. dealing with all these heightened emotions, mm -hmm. heightened mm -hmm. fear. Mm -hmm. People are feeling like the doors are closing everywhere they go. Yeah. And what do creatives do? When, when things are not clear, they create other strategies well they try, and they try to make do. sense of things they try to make sense of things mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. so you know they they may create art to be educational they yes. may create art to be, be confrontational yes they may mm -hmm. create art to uh basically create community yes they may create art to uh fundraise Yes, I like the fundraiser. Well, we were talking about the AIDS thing. And we're talking yeah. about um, the various fundraisers, Live Aid, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, Elton John also, who did, you know, Candle in the Wind was a whole AIDS awareness and fundraising. Yeah, and um, even um, Bruce Springsteen, who yes. did Philadelphia. Yes, I mean, yes. Beautiful film. Beautiful film. Beautiful Sad music. film, but yeah, beautiful, beautiful music. music beautiful yes. film. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, there's just so many illustrations of... 
I think what artists do and creatives do mm -hmm. when there is some kind of crisis that mm -hmm. that puts our humanity on the line because I think that's right because yeah, artists yeah. really we're really always talking about the ethereal we're we're somewhere between like the physical body mm -hmm. and the spiritual body and yes. the psychic body and so yeah. we're always we're always kind of playing with that yes. line, right? Yeah, we are. Absolutely. That's, we're, our, we're, that's we're, kind of our job in society. Yeah, we play with exactly with that limit, with liminal, ethereal shit. Where so we, it's really yeah. the artists mm -hmm. in society that are mm -hmm. like, hey, yeah. we're, we're the ones that are creating the definitions of mm -hmm. how to respond yeah, I believe so. What to, surprises me in this case is that we, you know, artists are reactive and everything else. And I don't feel that we've seen, and I might be wrong, and I wish you guys would actually comment, you know, so we're not like crickets. Um, I would like to see, I don't know that there's any freaking Corona art other than cartoons and mocking videos. Like, I feel like... Well, this hasn't played out yet. It hasn't played out yet, but I feel like we should be reacting more and more quickly like that's kind of our job and I feel like maybe that's because there are more creative forms such as short form videos or caricatures or you know comedy skits like maybe that's the creative form that this virus is going to take as opposed to more fine art or the plays or the movies or whatever I mean obviously we haven't had time to react in that way but well I think one of the things that is changed in in modern times as we have this ability to scientifically analyze a virus mm -hmm. and yeah. how I mean I remember even early on in the AIDS epidemic they didn't even know how it was transmitted mm -hmm. you mm -hmm. know they they really didn't even understand that it was a blood yeah. pathogen and then right and you know that it really they they didn't understand well it's like it was like plague i mean you you think like when plague they didn't know how it was transmitted so there were all these crazy measures to avoid plague you know from wearing the crazy masks mm -hmm. to going away but i feel like we're saying like i feel like we haven't learned anything i feel like we're back in that same way of doing things we're doing the isolation we're shutting down everything we're right. wrecking the economy well, all we're doing is it, really so we this are. guy that i was listening to he's like all we're doing is buying time. And the only mm -hmm. thing that time buys you is an opportunity to respond in a certain way. Mm -hmm. And if you don't respond in the correct way, then you don't get that time back. Right. 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 And well, and I feel like we don't so get what he was a lot saying, of that production back. I feel like we don't get a lot of him that. And this, work, yeah. this woman, they worked in New York on tuberculosis. They worked on HIV. Mm -hmm. They worked on Ebola in Africa. Ebola was another one that was major. And I think that that really touched, like, I think if we were to examine Ebola, we would have to go and look at African art, um, which I'm sure has a lot of representations. Oh, of, yeah. I that because just decimating whole families, whole communities, yeah. whole villages. And I mean, that breaks down the fabric of society. And I think creativity so much is, you know, kind of having that support of, you know, yeah. people. And how do you do that? You know, how do you keep with that? Yeah, I mean, basically, you know, he worked on the front lines of all of these mm -hmm. diseases. And, you know, he was saying that that you have to you have to think about how you're going to respond to it. And right. mm -hmm. and oftentimes, you know, when you're doing these quarantines, all you're doing is so he was like, so he was like, and what do I mean when I'm buying time? What mm -hmm. I mean is mm -hmm. it took, we had only three hospitals that could rep respond to Ebola virus. Right. And in six weeks, we had 75 hospitals. We were able to coordinate 75 hospitals right. that were prepared, that had everything they needed to respond to that. So right. that's what he was talking about specifically with time. It's well, like, I almost feel like using that time and kind of buying that time to kind of coordinate a response. I feel like that's an actually very creative measure. I feel like yeah. that's where the medical community starts to get creative. But that's why he said, I'm not a doctor. I'm mm -hmm. not an epidemiologist. Mm -hmm. He's like, Obama hired me to do create this program in a creative way. Specifically mm -hmm. because I'm not an expert, a medical expert. He because was like, it was he the wanted, outside view. He's like, we have all the yeah. scientific experts. Yeah. Let's do He wanted somebody who yeah. could collaborate with all these different types mm -hmm. of, you know, foundations, all right. these different types of experts mm -hmm. and, and, you know, government officials. 
he, he was like that, that is specifically, I mean, it was so smart mm -hmm. to pick someone who could think creatively on their feet about how to collaborate with all these right? different, you know what and, I mean? And that's kind of amazing. I think that we need to find somebody like that quickly. And the problem is, is that in this country, at least, the person who's been put on this task force is yeah. probably one of the least creative people that we've seen in a long time. And so we feel very kind of powerless. We don't have that creative mind that we can look at and think, oh, they're coming up with solutions on right. the fly, quickly being reactive, all that stuff. We're, we're, I'm feeling like there's kind of a shutdown. Right. And it's frustrating as hell because, you know, the other part of the equation is not knowing what's next, not knowing, and also knowing that there's going to be another one. There's going to be another one. Does it get worse? What happens? And well, yeah, I mean, there's always, I mean, with life, there's a lot of uncertainty and that's yeah. what makes it life so sweet. And right? that's, yeah. And that's what makes creatives be so able and so willing to try to kind of, you know, do things as that ephemeral quality or it's that, you know, it's, it's that reactivity and it's that, yeah, it's that thing of like, what might happen tomorrow? You know, yeah. Yeah. Here. Uh, we don't know. I'm not in fucking Iceland. That's yeah. You're not going to be in Iceland tomorrow. <laughs> but you do have an ice in your freezer, and you oh, can put ice in your drink. Fucking god, I'm gonna like you can put ice, ice in your drink, and you can go to Bedmo, and you can get some Reka vodka. I think that's what we need to do. We need <laughs> oh our, so our next episode. We're gonna make a drink with Reka vodka from Iceland because that from that Iceland. vodka is so badass it's oh so good god. oh my so god so that'll be my gift to you that's I'm very get, I'm gonna very get you some you. Reka vodka See, and we will this is friendship in the time yeah. of you know, <laughs> <And> corona, corona. <laughs> Love in the time of Corona. Right? Thank you we so should much, write that book. Yeah. We should write that book. We'll be the first artist to write it. Let's, we're doing a short episode because that's all we can handle. Well, right so now. we want to know what, you know, we, so we just want to, we want to uh, send you off. With, yes. We'll do a little send with, off, a little Corona send off. With a positive note, right? I mean, right. I, she's not going to be positive. I'm not going to be positive at all. No, she hasn't drank I'm, enough. But I'm, I'm I would like to say, it. you know, use the coronavirus to inspire you to be more creative mm. and creative <laughs> in your community, creating support. I'm going to be in my people, own community since I'm not going to Iceland. Dispelling fear among your, your fellow yeah, the men and women. Needs to stop. We need yeah. To, yeah. Cut you know, that shit out. And, and if people need help, you know, consider using your creative means yes. to fundraise yeah. creatively yeah. for people that need help. Yeah. Whether, you know, their, their, uh, their job has been affected. Maybe they can't go to work Which because is happening. of it. Yes. You and, know, and I mean, also, and go especially to... healthcare workers. I exactly. mean, healthcare workers Oops. are, ooh, ooh, that was not an earthquake. No. That was my was, foot hitting the camera. It was not the coronavirus. Um, no. <laughs> it was not a coronaquake. She's having coronaquakes. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I mean, think about how you can Help posit positively cray -cray. Mm -hmm. affect your mm -hmm. community. Not infect. Don't infect them. Wash your hands. Wash your hands. All the time. Don't wear a Clean mask. services. Actually help. And, yes. and just, you know, try to not be stressed out. Like Don't your panic. immune system is more, it, it behaves better when you're not yes. stressed out. And if you hydrate. Have a drink. Hydrate. 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 So you guys. So anyway. Cheers, cheers to you. I hope we cheers. all survive. <laughs> God. Toodles. Dark as hell. <laughs>